but Corey takes a three nothing lead. So far, they both play perfect. Yeah, Corey's up three nothing. Okay. Corey shooting a thousand and uh, so is he shooting a thousand or not? <laughs> I don't know what you call it. <laughs> How do you call that a thousand or zero? I don't know. <laughs> 16.6. A little bit, a little bit harder. Actually, one full mile per hour harder. Then again, he put it move again. So oh, yeah. He's got to be a different gap rack. rack yeah. Yeah. Now he's got that five ball on the side rail. He has to break up now, or he could be problems for him later. Yeah, it didn't break up very good either. See, so it could still be tough here. That's one of the keys of professional goals when we play. We have to break the balls out immediately give ourselves a chance to look for the right pattern to run out. Yeah. If you don't break the ball out earlier, you're actually not playing a pattern to run out, but playing a pattern for a breakout and hoping you get a good shot off the breakout. Yeah, hope you get lucky. Yeah. The earlier you break the balls out, the less you're leaving it up to luck to decide whether you're going to run out. It's a different mentality when you have a ball to break out. Yeah. If the balls are all wide open, you're playing to win the game. Like Corey, he just got on the Maybe his only chance to break this ball out, but he did it as early as possible. Mm -hmm. And he's got a he good angle. He played shape for the breakup. Yeah. Instead of trying to put shape just to run out. He mm -hmm. broke him out perfect, too, and misses the ball. Or if he, if he makes that, he's probably going to run out. That's an uncommon miss by Corey. Yeah, he must have just took it for granted. Yeah. Which you can do in a bar table. The pockets are big on yeah. bar tables. You can just think that you're invincible on a bar table and that whatever you shoot at, you're going to make. You stop aiming. You st yeah, you still have to aim it right at the hole. That's probably the uh, biggest reason why a pro would miss on a bar box is they just take it mm -hmm. for granted. All right, see what Niels does on his first turn at the table. Being down 3 0. No, 13, 13 doesn't pass the 5, so that's going to be a problem for him unless he plays short shape underneath the 13 and play in the corner past the 7. Yeah, I think that's definitely the shot to do, especially right here. You could do it right there and you'd be out. You can try to break that out. I'm going to try to, try to break that out. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think that was a necessarily the right shot. But, uh, He's in a little bit of a spot here. He's jacked up in the hole. But even though even though that may not be the right shot, he did it first shot, you know. He didn't wait for us. Mm -hmm. He made up his mind he's gonna get it out of there in the first time. Try he gets. So now he's jacked up, doesn't nobody likes jacked up out of the pocket. No. Except maybe Earl. Because no matter what when you're jacked up this, you're bouncing the cue ball. Yeah. The cue ball's gonna be skipping on the clock. You can't keep it down and smooth running to the ball. And your, your position play can be hindered a lot because you, can't, you can only get so much in your thumb the ball. And what if you scare, accidentally skip the ball and it makes contact with the nine ball while the key ball is a little bit in the air just to hand the air? Yeah, it actually might overcome the contact it. Point. Yeah. Neil's a good at these shots, so he should have no problem. See, he's a real smooth. That's a good shot. Because the key, key to these tough shots is being so smooth, you know, not being jerky. Yeah. These side pockets in the field is almost like they're that big as a lot of the bar tables we play. Yeah. Those are a little bit tighter. And when you do here, Troy, you obviously can't play it down the corner because you you have no chance of making 13 anywhere. Right. So you have to play it in the side. But do you go in hard and break it out? Do you go in soft and try to play a 13 up in the corner? I would consider, I like to cinch balls and like try to, you know, not do too much ball bumping and stuff. Mm -hmm. because, you know, uh, you never know what's going to happen. Exactly. Bump the ball. I think I might cinch it and go down and maybe play the 13 off the two in the side. Because that that's, would make that's, the pocket big. Oh, he likes the, the bump. Breakout. But he hit it good, you know, and he had a good yeah. speed on it. And, and even then, it's a. Uh, it's up in the air on what to do there. I mean, you can do a number of things. On a nine-footer, I'd probably break that up. Yeah. On a bar table, I'm playing behind it. Yeah. Because you had the option. You can go straight to the corner, pass the seven ball, cheat the pocket, and slide it off the rail. Or you can play it off the two or in the side. And then it's just a tap out. Yeah. Uh, now he's still funny. This is no bargain. Yeah, he still has to work the cue ball a little bit. He has what would you do here? So. Traffic. Um... Kind of funny, both angles are like Here I rest. might hit a lot of low left and just try to pull it and hold it and hope I come back out for a good position on the eight ball. The eight pretty much goes anywhere. 
Just drag it over. Uh, he he was so worried about scratching. about scratching it, holding the cue ball and where it was going to end up. But again, he either undercut it and tried to throw it in. That was a really rare angle, too, to where it was just in that funny spot. Mm -hmm. and, and considering that you had to play shape on the eight, and it made blind, it ten blind times cuts hard. aren't fun on any table. No. Blind cuts are where you're shooting away from the pocket instead of angling towards the pocket. Yeah. You have to back cut the ball. A lot of times the contact point is out there where you can't see it. It's actually a blind cut. And a lot even players have problems with that shot. We, that's why we practice them so much. Yeah. <laughs> it Dang. does come up. See here again, Corey went down. He's going to take out the two balls that are close to the short rail and then shoot the ball that's above the eight because now position on the eight is going to be dead easy. He doesn't have to cross over. Up. Exactly. So even on a wide open table, your, uh, your pattern is very important because it makes things much simpler. If you take a bad pattern, you can really make an easy out look exactly. super tough. Even if you get out, it's not really the way to do it. And this way, Corey had no chance of scratching, no chance of missing. Everything